So we have a lot to do in this video and we're going to start by just, I don't know, what's most important to me first, which is getting it running on its own fuel tank or tanks. So we're going to take this tank out, don't know how much gas is in it or not in it, um, clean this tank out and because this is a camper special there is a second tank underneath that I'd like to get going, see what's up with the second tank. Now once we get it running on its own accord, we can deal with other problems like making sure all the lights work and uh, I want to hook the tack up, this fuel efficiency gauge which is basically just a vacuum gauge and she's going on down the line. Here's our sending unit. That actually feels like a new-ish hose. I got a whole ring of keys with this truck and half of them say fuel, gas, gas, fuel, but none of them open up the thing. You know, it might just be stuck and old, but it's coming out of there. What am I missing? finally came out. It's a very complicated little piece of equipment here for these double tanks. Double vent hoses, Y-pipe, this is all legitimately set up. I mean, it's pretty cool. Here we go. Ah! Spilled some, but I mean, that's probably three and a half gallons right there. Wasn't super full, but we'll clean it out a little more. All right, now that the tank is empty, uh, we can look down in there and we can see that it's really not that bad. There's a little bit of debris down in there, but uh, we can just Throw, you can look at on the left there you can see where the gas uh, level was that's what that old gas does look how orange and stained it is but not a lot of debris down there we can throw new gas in it throw a fuel filter in between and we should be able to we should be able to live with that without getting crazy with it and now we got to move on to the secondary tank which might be more of like a I don't know problem there could be more to do with it because I'd like to have both of these tanks working um, yeah there you go there's a giant hole there where I don't know if mice got in there, possibly. Uh, it's been laying open, so debris and dirt and leaves and that stuff got in there. So maybe, I don't know. So we're going to take these three straps off. We're going to have to cut these. Let's see, where's these hoses at? Yeah, there's a probably a vent hose and the main feed line and then the main fill neck so we'll cut these lines so we're going to put all new rubber hoses in there i'm going to have to go get new new big hoses made this fuel hose so let's go ahead and drop this tank and see what we got
Something. Ow! Oh my gosh. These freaking thorns. <sighs> Something's holding it up. Look at all that. Also, there is something I did want to clear up on this truck. So in the beginning, I said this was a 440 because that's what Jimmy, the guy I bought it from, said it was. Said it's a factory 440. And uh, I looked up the VIN tag. I decoded the VIN tag. There's a place online you can do that. And the code J on it designates it as a 400. That's what I saw. But then I said, all right, well, let's actually figure out what this is. And so I looked up online how to figure out if something's a 400 or a 440 because, I don't know, I've never bought a 400 or a 440. If it's a 400, there will be a machined plate underneath the distributor, but if it's a 440, there will be a machined flat plate behind the air conditioner right here, and it will say 440 on it. 440. There it is, right there on the driver's side. It says 440 on the machine plate. So this is a 440 verified. So I've been under here vacuuming this out. This had a rat's nest in it, rat turds everywhere, because the gas tank goes here, you can see the straps, and you know they just had this filled. You can still see some right there where it's packed in really hard that I couldn't get. And uh, I figured out why my brake lights weren't working, because all four wires are chopped there, and there's nothing here all the way till over here. I just... Uh, I'm getting these ready for butt connectors and new wires to run to my uh, brake lines and brake lights. And then once I do that, I'll check even further back and see if they tore wires up even closer to the lights. But I'm sure that's why my brake lights weren't working. And I got my rolls of wire right there, uh, green, black, white, and yellow. Uh, it's supposed to be brown. I don't have brown, so I'm using white. This right here is a the second sending unit. There, this doesn't go all the way down. So this right here is a vent. Here is the leads for your sending unit. This is the pickup tube for the fuel to come out of this tank. And this is the, the fill vent. So this is a thicker, a little bit bigger vent so that whenever you're filling it, um, it can vent out faster because the smaller vent hole won't, won't vent as fast. The inside of the tank doesn't look that bad. Luckily, uh, like I showed earlier, that hose had broke. It was just open, and uh, it, pro it let all the gas evaporate. So that's why the tank is pretty clean on the inside. So I have the multimeter set on ohms, and I have the test leads on the sending unit. And, oh, now it's working. Yeah, just a second ago, it wasn't reading anything. Oh, okay, wait a minute. Where'd you go? See, look, now it's not reading. Oh, okay. 
1650. I don't know, maybe it is working. I thought it wasn't working. Okay, so all the way down we're at. Uh, we keep going lower. 1100. Okay, now it's going up to 12, 12, 5. All right, I don't know, the sending unit seems to be working, so we'll go ahead and put it back in there. There. Now we gotta put the hoses on it, extend them out, because you don't want to be putting the hoses on after you put it up in there. So we'll put the new hoses on first, uh, I think I might put new leads on these because these are pretty trashed. And then once we get everything situated, then we'll stick it up in there. So I got the new hoses clamped on up top so I don't have to try and do it while I'm up in there. Fuel feed line, vent hose, vent hose, sending unit leads. And uh, I have new... Um, and I'll plug the sending unit in before I put it up in there. Some of the wires were eight off anyway, so there's the ground and there's the uh, power. Serious gas hose, friggin' metal wire in it. Oh, it's gonna be hard to bend. So, I gotta take a break from working on this real quick because I said in the last video towards the end that I had sold this car, uh, the fly and drive from New Jersey to Arizona, the 1960 Impala. Uh, a gentleman bought it, gave me a deposit a few days ago. Now, I have to meet up with him uh, to sell it. This has been such a cool car. I love this thing. It got me across the country. Good old Chevy power. Old 283 with a two-speed power glide. This thing is a this thing is a sweet car. Yeah, yeah that's a cool name. Thank I you. think somebody with the name Gunner should own this. <laughs> So Gunner and his wife, they just bought this, and he's younger than me. I'm 26, he's 24. I think it's cool that a young couple bought it. Travis. Yeah, man. And uh, they are, they're up in Mesa, and they're up in Mesa, and uh, they're just gonna go enjoy the car. So I'm super stoked. It's going to a good home, gonna enjoy it. That's what it's all about, you know what I'm saying? Keep them on the road, keeping them driving. Don't let them sit, don't let them go to waste, you know what I mean? There it is, it's back on the road. It's gonna be enjoyed for years to come. That's the whole point. This gas neck hose that goes from the cab to the tank was molded originally, but they don't sell the molded hose in the aftermarket. And what you buy you know, at the hose store is just straight hose. So it's got this curve in it, and I'm scared that by bending it and twisting it on the truck, I'm gonna break one of my gas necks. So I'm, I'm trying to use the press to sort of press it in the shape I need, because there's a wire in here.
I'll have you know this took three hours to bend into that shape but it's on there and the gas tank is on there the vent lines are on there the fuel feed line that's on the other side of the tank is on there that goes to uh, there the other side of the truck right there so um, now we can move to the inside tank Alright, so the end cab gas tank is, is bolted in, everything's together, fuel neck is in, vent hose number one, vent hose number two which is back there which you can hardly see, fuel neck hose that goes down to the tank underneath the bed, that's all on, all secured, and what I noticed is these wires right here are eight off. They were going up into the cab and they go around here. Uh, that's the fuel sending unit over there and I just started pulling on them and they came out. See the mice just got to it. It goes up into the cab all the way around back down that way and this is a vent hose. This just goes up and loops around this metal line and then goes down and vents outside the cab and this is the feed line for this tank that goes down to that auxiliary um, uh, solenoid changer to change which tank you're pulling from. I have this roll of wire here and I'm just going to kind of straighten it out, fish it through here and then tape it to the wire there and then pull it back through because there's enough length to reach here. And then I'll do the same thing for this. I was able to pull up some more out of there and it's long enough to reach. So I'm just going to fish it through there instead of using my wire, reuse the old wire and replug it back together. The only problem is the mice ate the wires all the way up to the housing so there's no there's no pigtail for me to butt connect to so I'm gonna have to this comes out of this housing and I might be able to go up to the local parts store and get another uh, light housing to put in here and then it'll have a pigtail on it we can use I changed my tune and I used this wire for pulling conduit through, uh, copper wire through conduit. It's a lot stronger of a wire, it doesn't bind up so much. I forgot I had that, so. Worked a lot better. So here you go, here's your sending unit wire from the tank. and they meet in the middle. There we go. Now these connected and these two wires go to the dome light, which I'll have to get another housing for that. So, good deal, wanted to get that done today. Well, that is what I wanted to get done today. I wanted those two gas tanks in. They're plumbed in, the fuel hose, the filler neck hose, the vent hoses, the feed lines, auxiliary tank, everything is in where it needs to be happy with that and got those wires met at the top of the cab that was good it's getting towards the end of the day now uh, it's wednesday in my world here today you'll be seeing this afterwards but tomorrow's thanksgiving so i wanted to wish you all a happy thanksgiving and uh, we'll pick this up uh, on monday What's up guys, hope you guys had a good Thanksgiving. It is now next week. We're back working on the 73 Camper Special and my parts came in that I've ordered to, I think, wrap up the motor part of it. We have an electric choke for the Edelbrock because I couldn't make the original manual choke that came on the truck work for the Edelbrock carb, so I ordered an electric choke for it. Here's our lower rad hose. Here is our fuel uh, solenoid to change from one tank to the other to go to the engine. 
thermostat gasket here's our thermostat here's our vacuum advance because the one on the truck is not working here's our heater control valve because the one on the truck is rusted out uh, rad cap upper rad hose voltage regulator even though we don't need it now because it wasn't charging and then you know a day later it started charging so we'll take it so what we're doing now is we're trying to finish up the fuel system portion of this whole thing and I'm going to replace the fuel filter right here that goes to the underbelly tank. I agree with what he did here by putting a fuel filter before the little actuator. I don't know what it takes to plug up that little actuator, but I'm not trying to find out. And these, these fuel lines are actually pliable, which is kind of crazy. Make sure we got it correct direction. Yeah, we got the flow in the right direction. So I'm just gonna reuse these fuel lines because I'm sure they're probably American made and they're in good shape, so whatever. Take the old actuator, or solenoid I should say, tank switching solenoid off. So for all intent and purposes, our fuel system should be uh, done. You should be able to put gas in it and go at this point. So this rubber hose is coming from the underbelly tank, which is the standard tank. Got a fuel filter on it before it gets to the solenoid. Uh, have a fuel hose and a fuel filter coming from the auxiliary tank in the cab. Also with a filter on it before it gets to anything. And then it goes into one. This is mounted. Have to put a wire on this and run it to where we can put power to it. And then it runs here, new uh, hose here, runs all the way up to the front. And once we get under the hood, I put a new hose here. Usually this is where I would put my fuel filter so I could easily access it and check and see if it's dirty or not. But since we have two under there, you know, there's no use. It's, it's gonna be clean coming up. Going to the fuel pump, all the way up to the carb. So fuel system, completely done. We can move on to something else now. So our next order of business is gonna be this vacuum advance because if you look, here, uh, you can suck through this hose and nothing happens, it's just open. It's not holding a vacuum, but if you do it to this one, you can see it will pull. So, obviously this one will hold a vacuum. Pop this cap off and see what it takes to get it off of there. So there's two Phillips on the outside case that hold this on. Out with the old and in with the new. Something is not making sense. Why are these I'm not really sure what I'm looking at here or why. If you look here, you can see vent hole, vent hole. You can see this and this are the same. This pin and this pin are the same. Um, but when you look at the arms, see this one goes up, curves, dowel pin up. This one's going down, dowel pin down. And if you turn it this way, they're they're mirrors of each other. Why, why am I looking at that? I don't understand what's going on here. Okay, so what I did not notice about the vacuum advances was that they had different kinds of arms. I, that was a very technical difference that I really didn't pick up on. So, ordered another vacuum advance and we'll start on the cooling system, radiator hoses and whatnot. And uh, we'll just start with a new rad cap.
at first I wasn't for sure if I was supposed to see that hole right there because I can see water through it if you sort of move this this fan around you can see water in there but it looks like a machined hole so I think we're good so your heater hoses come off of your water pump here and then they came over here to this heater control valve which is completely toast it's controlled by a wire inside you you know push and pull it and it'll it'll pull this valve but it's completely trashed you can see the hose is supposed to clamp on but this this is completely rusted off so i they sell they sell one on rock auto which is kind of crazy to me that they would have this but here it is um it goes yeah, right here put your new wire on it and you can control your control your heat so we'll put that on and i got i'm really excited about this it's what you get excited about as an adult i bought two 50 foot rolls of heater hose because i'm so tired of going to the parts store for three foot of this three foot of that blah 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 um, so i just went ahead and ordered 50 foot of three quarters and 50 foot of three eighths and some 5 16 hose off amazon so i can just you know get this done without having to go to the store Back when I first got the truck, when I squeezed this hose and moved it, it, it dripped some water some, but I couldn't exactly see what was going on. But I found this after I took it off, and you can see those those lines, those are scratch marks, paw marks. Those mice actually ate a hole in the uh, lower radiator hose. That's definitely from mice. Pretty wild, huh? All right guys, so I'd mentioned in the last video how I sold the 1980 Dodge to a subscriber in Miami. Uh, the transporter is now here to pick it up. So we'll get this thing loaded and we'll get it on its way 2,000 miles across the country. All right, let's see, make sure we're... Look at that. Furs like a kitten. So our next order of business while we have the vacuum advance coming in the mail is to put this electric choke kit on. And I have never done this before. I've never put an electric choke on. Um, so I looked up a video on how to do it, got all my parts laid out. So we'll see if common sense and my memory of the video can get me through this. First thing we have to do is take this uh, choke rod out because this this will turn right and operate your choke but they gave us a different rod in the kit um, for the electric choke uh, portion of this and i took the carburetor off because i could immediately foresee myself dropping this bolt down this carburetor and into the motor
back comes out. This arm comes off. And then this rod should come out of there and then we should be able to pull the rod clean out should go in just like so okay okay so there's that and then this fits in it locks it's only got one way that it goes so you can't you can't just put it anywhere. Snug it down a little bit. Don't want to tighten it too tight. We'll just go ahead and put our other choke rod on. Does this does this bolt not the same size? Oh my gosh, it's not the same size. Oh man, what are we gonna do about that? One, two, three, four, five, six. Is there any other thing? So the issue I'm having is they gave me this screw which fits in here to hold the arm on. Um, and they didn't give me another one this size to go here. And I was going to use the original one that came out of the rod on the other one. But this is too small. It won't screw down. It's that small. That looks like it matches up It's a 632nd. And, yep. Looks like it'll work. I don't know how far this... Oh, cool, I don't have to cut it down. Yep, it goes way in there, way in there. Still close, but no cigar. I think my battery literally just died. All right, I saw to do it. I mean, a little further, and we're gonna break through the whole thing. All right, we got it. Okay, it's on. Apparently, this is a vacuum port, and if, yeah, just like you said, uh, if this has not had an electric choke, that vacuum port will be capped off. So this was a, I don't know, manual choke or some other way of doing it. And then the housing itself has a little spot here for a rubber o-ring so that goes on there pushes in right and then the housing will bolt on here and you know make create a seal for that vacuum port screw number two before I tighten this I'm making sure that that seal yeah that little black rubber seal is still on there and it hasn't been knocked off this should move freely yeah got our piston our arm that's gonna go in here so yeah we're looking good okay housing is mounted on this is going to go like so um, did they give us a cotter pin for this I don't think I see one Still too big. I'll have to figure that out in a minute. Here is our gasket. Seals dust out. This 
hook on the arm of the spring will catch this to move our choke. Everything is still free. So we'll put it like that and then we'll move it till we start catching it. See? And then this holding ring. Now we should be able to set it back on there. There's some adjustment we're gonna have to do. Get some power hooked up to it and uh, we'll have a nice nice electric choke. This is a really good, this is a good upgrade to do anyway. So now that we have the carburetor back on, we'll go ahead and send power to this choke so that we can have it working. I'm gonna ground it to the housing of this coil. Right on there, it fits nice. And we'll just cut it, put an end on it. And then when we run it again, we can do whatever, more adjustments if need be. I'm sure we will. Cool. So the next thing on the list is to get power down to that uh, tank solenoid. And for that, I wanna test the switch uh, because this goes in the cab and one position is your standard tank, the other position is your auxiliary tank. So I don't know if this switch is working, so. So we're not getting power. Now we are. Okay, switch is working. So the switch goes through this hole, but for some reason he was running that power through these switches. I don't know why. I'm gonna take this off of there and use the factory switch, but this right here is our power, all right? So this is the power he had running to this switch, but we're gonna put it to the factory switch anyway. And then this white wire right here goes out to the tank. I already traced it out there. It goes out to the, to the solenoid, I mean. Power off, power on. Okay, let's go see if we have power down at the wire. All right, let's just touch it to this and see. Oh, you hear it? Put a little eyelet on this, hook it up, and we will have two functioning tanks. Remember earlier in the video when I was putting this tank in and the wires were eight off that go to the tail lights and I'd, I'd fixed them and whatnot? So here we go, I found some things out here. If you do this switch right here, these running lights come on, on the outside. So he had the running lights wired to that switch and if you come back here the tail lights or the brake lights are, are on right so he's got those lights wired into the wrong place which doesn't make any sense how you could have ever drove the truck that way um, but if you do the signals this switch is it's not clicking but I had it all right, signal works. And if you do the headlights, we get nothing. This wire right here, so this wire is going nowhere and he's got the taillights wired into the switch. I mean, this is all jacked up. This has to be fixed. After butt connecting like three different spots, you know, we should have brake lights. I can't tell from back here, but on, off, on, off. All right, so we do have brake lights. That is another problem down. All right, so this morning I've been working on the wiring and electrical for the lights on this thing. It's just been a mess. Um, I got these signals working right here and I got the signals working on this side too. So all the signals front and back are working now. The only ones that aren't working are these fender marker lights and I am, there we go. So I am getting power to it. It's blinking, that's the wire that goes up here. But no matter what, I thought it might be a bad ground, but it's still not working. And this is not serviceable, so this is riveted. Not really much I can do about it, so I think we're gonna have to just forego these, even though I wish they worked, they're pretty cool. The only other light electrical problem we're having is none of our running lights work. So I think it's a common problem with all of them. 
So I've been messing with this pretty much all day and I think I pretty well got it straightened out. Um, I got all my lights to work. Uh, watch them not work now that I said they work. Look, they're not working. I told you. Okay, now they're working. The headlight switch is just a little dirty. So, parking lights should have left signal. Right. And brake. Alright, let's try it again. Brake lights. Alright, they're working. Heater valve mounted. Nice. So yesterday, the last thing we did, dad was over here helping me. Um, this window would not roll up and down. Both of them don't. I got the door panel off on the other side on, uh, on the driver door. Uh, dad came over, took the door panel off, lubricated everything. So this rolls up and down nice and smooth now, whereas it, it didn't do anything before. It was so hard. I was scared I was going to break the window. Also adjusted the striker because this door wouldn't close. You had to slam it like an ape to get it to close. So that will work now. This window wouldn't roll up and down. Um, it was kind of just you know, willy nilly in there. And, and this track came off the window. So there's actually, this rubber is, is petrified and hard. Rollers go in the track. This pounds onto the bottom of the window. And then that's how you have your up and down motion. And I went across town and I got some of this right here. This is that rubber belting. It goes down in the middle of that track and then you literally just pound the window up against it. It's a pretty crude way of doing it, but it's how they did it for literally decades. Get all that old rubber out. And there we go. Thought they might have glued the bottom down, but nothing a little elbow grease can't get. I mean, this stuff is hard as a brick bat anyway. I mean, you're just lucky it holds on anyway. Need a smaller one. I got enough to do this two or three times if I have to. You know, I didn't just get enough to do it once because, you know, the chances of me messing up are, uh, you know, it's never zero. Whenever, the first time I ever did this on, I think my GMC, my red and white one you see in my videos in the background, uh, I did this for the first time when I was like a little kid and I just couldn't believe that that's how windows were held in. I thought, that's it? You know, no nuts or bolts or, I mean, you're telling me the only thing holding that on is just a piece of rubber belt? I thought that was kind of primitive, but I guess it works, you know? Only it goes in one way, so you can't mess that up. So I had to stop and switch my tune here because the rubber mallet on the thing, that's not working. So on this side, there's a nylon roller for the track to go in. It guides it, you know, as it goes up. Uh, this side, it's broke off. So it's, it's just going to keep coming out of the track and caulking in the, uh, in the track. I got these nylon rollers. So I'm going to have to drill this out, put another nylon roller in there, and also um, the rubber mallet beating on the top isn't working. So dad's going to come over. He's got an old uh, furniture clamp. So when, and I don't want to take this window out. Typically how you do this is you take the window out, you rubber mallet the track onto the window while it's upside down, and then you flip it back over and put it in. I don't want to take this out. All right, we got the old one out of its hole. Here's the track and the new nylon roller I got, but it won't fit. Uh, I mean, it's just there. But see that? I'm gonna have to grind that. Just 
like that. Look at that. I might not be able to film this because we're going to be monkeying right in here. So you can't see nothing anyway, so give me a minute. So the window's in the track here, and uh, it's still wet in there. And what can happen is, is if you roll the window down, you can pull the track back out again. So don't freak out, all right? I bought this at a thrift store, and it is a hair dryer, and we're going to use it to just dry it out a little bit so whenever it dries out the rubber has a lot more friction on the window. So we're in good shape. The window's in, this door is done. This is working, the button is coming out. The inside and outside door handle is working. I got the door panel back on, the window roller on. We're gonna leave this up. So for all intent and purposes, this is done. So now we can move on to the vacuum advance. I just got it in the mail, I just checked the mailbox. So we'll put this in and then we should be able to run it on its own tank. I haven't even started it yet since I got those tanks in. All right, this looks more correct. This is gonna work. Loop it in there. All right, everything's all hooked up. Let's give it a whirl. It might take a minute to pull it up to the front. Might need to give it a little bit of... Didn't even sound like it was trying to get light on that brake clean. Well, it helps when you put the rotor in it. Let's try it again. Her own tanks got those cleaned out got the doors working we did just a bunch of stuff we still have a lot to do on this truck though i want to clean the paint up it's still all chalky and nasty i'll wash it you know maybe uh polish it buff it maybe wet sand it you know get it looking really really good i got the carpet kit over in the back so we'll put the carpet kit in it we still got to put the interior in it i still want to fix that rust hole in the driver's side floor that i haven't gotten to yet so so there, there's still a lot of details to work out on this thing but I gotta cut it for today. I gotta free up the trailer because we're gonna go pick up another car tomorrow. The truck that's on the trailer right now is a up and coming project. The truck we're getting tomorrow is gonna be a project even after that. If you wanna see the projects that are up and coming on the channel, make sure you check out our channel memberships uh, because I post there projects that we get that we're going to be doing before everyone else sees them. And you also get to see uh, videos 24 hours before they hit the main channel. So either way, I really appreciate you guys watching. Me and Dad both are very grateful for it. We just hit 130,000 subscribers, so thank you for that. Uh, we really wouldn't be possible without you guys watching and supporting and leaving feedback in the comments, so it means a lot to us. And anyway, guys, we'll see you in the next one.